Compete Radio with your host, Josh Fourier, Buddy Early with the news, Alfonso Chavez with Sports Talk, Tony Wardsman with Ask Tony, and Eric Carlisle with Hot Topics. Compete Radio. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Josh Fourier. We have a great show for you today. Uh, Eric, though, is on assignment. He will be uh, joining us next week, I'm sure. Coming up a little later in the show, be sure to stay with us because we'll have Ryan Quinn. Now, he is the author of newly released uh, book, The Fall, and he'll be joining us a little later in the show. But right now, it's time for Sports News with Buddy Early. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing, I'm doing well. How are you? Well, I'm okay. Everyone here uh, around the compete headquarters seems to be battling what Connie calls the creeping crud. Yeah, that's kind of a common a common occurrence in this office. <laughs> but you know, we love each other. We keep passing it around. Yeah, I think it's that Arizona weather that contributes to the problem. <sighs> Aside from us working so closely together <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> Sounds a little strange, but okay. Speaking of working closely together, I'm going to reach over and smack Connie the next time she wears her Pittsburgh shirt. Uh, across I from can't me. help it. Your prediction? I know. There are very bad. Let's just get that out of the way. We have been very football focused for the last several weeks because of the NFL playoffs. And I am going to talk a little football in a little bit. But I have actually a, a nice story from baseball. I think it's a nice story. Um, it's about uh, the National League MVP from this past season, Joey Votto of the Cincinnati Reds, um, got a raise. Now, you might not think that's a, a nice, feel-good story. It's not like he saved a cat from a tree or something. Anybody <laughs> getting a raise in this um, economic atmosphere is but, uh, something new. <laughs> the reason I like this story is because uh, this guy was making a half a million dollars this past year, um, which oh, in baseball baby? standards is... <laughs> is really, really not a lot of money. Now, of course, we all know sports figures are overpaid. Let's, you know, we can get that out of the way. But yeah, we've he, done that one. <laughs> even in the world of professional sports and baseball in particular, where, where they do have these exorbitant salaries, there are still athletes who are overpaid, even in, in that realm. And the reason for that is players are not paid based on their worth or value or they're worth, they're, played, they're paid based on what the market will bear. And that's why you have, you know, A-Rod making $33 million and Derek Jeter, $22 million. And, and actually, the New York Yankees have five players each making over $20 million. Oh. It's not because they're really worth that. It's because that's what the market will bear. But I called this a, a, a good story because Joey Votto was the uh, MVP of the National League making a half a million dollars. And he just got a nice raise this past week to a three-year contract worth $38 million. What? So, good for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A 2,600% raise. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, yeah, at least. <laughs> but um, just let's just recap uh, Joey Votto's 2010 statistics, and I apologize for sounding like Brenda Vaccaro. <laughs> this, this should be interesting. Joey Votto uh, hit 37 home runs, which was third in the league. His 113 R RBIs were also third in the league. Wow. He uh, hit, he had 106 runs that he scored. Uh, his 424 on base percentage led the league. He had a 324 batting average and even stole 16 bases. Uh, he's 27 years old, and this is he'll be entering his fifth season. And he helped the Cincinnati Reds win their division and get to the playoffs for the first time in 15 years. Gosh. So that's kind of why I think it's a feel-good story, because it's yeah. not the Yankees or the Red Sox or the Dodgers or the Cubs or these big money teams and these big markets. This is the Cincinnati freaking Reds <laughs> yeah. who don't have a lot of money and don't have a lot of good players. Um, and this guy, like I said, he's only 27. Uh, he was He's sort of you know one of those lunch pail guys. He goes out there and does his job. He doesn't date a supermodel. You know, he's not doing commercials for you, whoever. You, you know what, though? That really hits home for me. I <laughs> I just turned 27, and oh, my God, if I can make that much yeah. money every year. It's just well, someone actually, my we're age. Gonna, we're going to have uh, batting practice and pitching practice <laughs> in the parking lot as soon as the show is over. I don't and think I'd so, like Connie. To. I'll end up destroying something, I'm sure. I'd, I'd like to remind our listeners that it's completely up to them whether or not Josh makes $13 million. <laughs> it's true. It's up to you, listeners. Oh, don't do that. Help us along. 
That is true. But I like this because, again, the Cincinnati Reds, that's, yeah. it, it means is that they has, got to keep a good player. Is you know, he at the peak of his career, do you think, right now? Um, I don't think he's even at the peak yet. I mean, okay. I think he's uh, still on an upward trend. Okay. So it's, it's all uphill for him for now. Well, well honestly, I, for him. I'm, I'm a real big fan of watching, you know, the little guy or, you know, more of a, a peripheral team you know i mean the cincinnati reds you don't see people running around wearing cincinnati reds jerseys or saying oh you know out here in phoenix (laughs) talking about how they love the cincinnati reds exactly so you know what i'm i'm really excited for this guy and i'm really excited for the reds you know that they were able to keep this player yeah Yeah, so they they can actually maybe be competitive for a few more years Mm -hmm. you know and maybe get there What's that? And maybe get there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they made it to the playoffs this past season. Maybe they'll take another step forward, you know, next summer and keep going. Who knows? But uh, that's our baseball story. Now for some football, Connie? Yes. I'm missing. No, wait. I'm playing hard to get. (laughs) We have to talk about football now. (laughs) Well, uh, this topic might perk up your ears. You know how to play hard to get. Sorry. (laughs) I don't know if you heard, but Brett Favre (laughs) filed his retirement papers Uh, earlier this week. (laughs) Again, that's How right. How many times is this now? Buddy? Well, this is only the second time he's actually filed retirement paperwork. Okay. But going back to 2005, when the Green Bay Packers and Brett Favre was still playing with the Packers, um, he hinted at retirement, and that's when the Packers drafted Aaron Rodgers out of California, who's now, you know, their quarterback and right. leading them potentially to the Super Bowl. They brought on, they drafted Aaron Rodgers as a future replacement for Brett Favre. The idea was, oh, a couple years under Brett Favre's tutelage, mm-hmm. and maybe he'll, he'll be Aaron Rodgers will be ready to step in. Yeah. Well, time, a couple years went by, and then after the 2008 season, um, Brett Favre said he was retiring, so they got Aaron Rodgers all ready. Then at the very, at the 11th hour, Brett Favre says, no, I don't want to retire. He <laughs> forces a trade to the New York Jets. Um, after the Jets, he said he was retiring. Oh, nope, he comes back to the Vikings for a year, has a great year, says he's retiring again, comes back during training camp this time, oh and plays gosh. this last season, which ended up being a very miserable season for Brett Favre on many levels. Yeah. Um, he it's had just... 19 touchdowns and I think uh, let's see, 11 interceptions. Uh, the team you know, tanked it. They were one of the preseason favorites. He missed three of the last four games. Bringing an end to his. Uh, Isn't I was going to say, hasn't he had a perfect record up till then? He had a 297 game streak that he started, uh, wow. starting games, and uh, that ended the season. But the question now is, you know, of course everyone's like, well, we've been through this before. Should we believe him? It's like the share farewell tour. Well, you know, well, I, th- I, I think he probably going. has a new career in photography. I think. If well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I mean that's part of the whole travesty of the season. It wasn't just he was poor on the field, but he had all of that stuff yeah. swirling around off field with, you know, the New York Jets employee Jen Sturger, mm-hmm. a former employee, who accused him of harassment and sending her text pictures of his penis. Yes. And then at the very end of the season, these two other. Uh, massage therapists that worked for the Jets or were contracted by the Jets, they're now suing him for inappropriate advances. So at this point, I don't even know if anybody wants Brett Favre back because their new coach in Minnesota a month ago, Leslie Frazier, who's the new head coach, he said, quote, I cannot think of any circumstance of where I would pick up the phone and say, Brett, do you want to come back next season? Oh, he said that a month wow. ago. It burns like chlamydia. And so, oh. Oh, I'm not sure what he meant by that, but um. initially my take <laughs> is he doesn't care if Brett Favre comes back or not. I, in fact, would prefer that he stay at home in Mississippi. I think that's the latter. Uh, He's kind yeah. of, I mean, obviously he was a, a tremendous player for quite some time. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. now it's showing that with all of this negative press that he's received from his behavior outside, off the field, it looks like now he's just made a joke out of himself. Yeah, and, and he, he probably regrets coming back at least this final season because he, after last season, the 2009 uh, football season, he could have retired with some, some dignity. Right. He will be a first ballot Hall of Famer when his time comes. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to recap what his legacy is in the NFL, In 325 career games with the Packers, Jets, and Vikings, Favre has thrown the ball 10,170 times for for 6,300 completions, has thrown for 71,838 yards, and 508 touchdowns. That's incredible. And those are all NFL records. 
Um, he has 185 wins as a quarterback, and of course that 297 game streak of starting games, which ended at the end of the towards the end of the season. And He's kind of the Pete Rose of football. <laughs> he could be. Yeah, well, I was I was gonna say you you really can't forget about his cameo as Woogie in There's Something About Mary. <laughs> That's right. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So you learn something oh, new every day. Oh man. But uh, you know, a lot of people do think that it, in a couple of years. Um, Especially, you know, down the road when, there's, when the Hall of Fame, um, his time comes mm -hmm. to enter the Hall of Fame, that maybe people will start to forget about the last few years of his career mm -hmm. and just say he was a great quarterback. That's what well, I he hope. was I mean, a great quarterback. How long do they have to wait, though, before they I think they it's five years. Nominated? I okay. think it's five years. So Now let's get to my wonderful predictions, which are going <laughs> wonderfully. <laughs> so wow. far, this... So far this NFL playoff season, um, there have been eight playoff games, and I've correctly predicted two. So yay, good for yay. me. <laughs> I'm going to try to do a little better this weekend. We're down to the conference championship games. Uh, let's go. In the NFC, we have uh, the Packers and the Bears, uh, divi division rivals and longtime rivals. Yeah, that's going to be a great game. They split their season series this year, uh, each winning a close one on their home field. They haven't played in the playoffs, though, since 1941. Wow. What? And everyone in the universe is picking the Packers because they think the Packers are on a roll. Um, the game is at Soldier Field, uh, so there might be a slight home favorite mm -hmm. uh, home edge for the Bears. I'm actually going with the Bears, and this is why. Uh, last week, the Packers beat the Falcons. Um, and, and then did so impressively. And But what I noticed about watching that game was Aaron Rodgers managed to get the ball off to his receivers just a split second before the Falcons defenders got to him. Mm -hmm. So good for him, but the Bears are a, qu a second quicker than the Falcons. And so I think the Bears' defensive line, uh, particularly, they have these two amazing defensive ends on both sides, Israel, uh, Adana Jay, and Julius Peppers. They're going to get to Aaron Rodgers, I think, and I, I think that's going to make the difference. So I'm probably the only one in the sports world taking the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> I've been not so successful so far this season, this playoff season. And this and season. to clarify for our listeners, he's referring to the football team, the <laughs> Chicago Bears, <laughs> right. and and not the Harry Bears. Right. Yeah. I think there should be more people taking Bears uh, in that second. Well, here at Compete Radio, <laughs> we're all about fair and balanced, <laughs> yeah. so we have to give the other end there. Uh, <laughs> Connie, Connie's not going to no like intended. me because my AFC pick, um, oh. of course, we have the Jets going to Pittsburgh to play the Steelers. Yeah. The Jets beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh back in early December. It was, it was an anomaly. <laughs> what I, can I, I say? I picked against the Jets so far twice in the playoffs. I picked them to lose to the Colts, and then I picked them to lose to the Patriots, and they proved me wrong both times. I'm not going to let them prove me wrong again. Okay. You know, I'm going to take the Jets in Pittsburgh. Um, again, this is a this is the conference championship, so it's kind of a crapshoot at this point. Mm -hmm. But something about the Jets and their their energy that they have, they're kind of on a roll. Also, like the Packers, although I'm not picking the Packers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really? think Pittsburgh's offensive line is sort of hanging by a thin thread. They've got some injuries and they're some tying replacement it together players. With the terrible towel. <laughs> replacement players in there. Um, the Jets' defense, they have some real great playmakers, and they're fired up. And Mark Sanchez is coming into his own, you know. Mm -hmm. He, I can see him leading this team to the Super Bowl and, and possibly winning it. And this is only his second season, so I, I'm pretty – you know I like Mark Sanchez, obviously. I know We've you like Mark that. Sanchez. But I like him as a quarterback <laughs> also. I think oh, he's okay. really matured in his two years in the league. And uh, I think this is his time. And it, it might be – you know, this might be before his time is supposed to be here. You know, it's only his, only in his second season. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think he's uh, he's gotten to that point already. Okay, we'll see. So that's what I'm going with the Jets and the Bears. My prediction for the Super Bowl. Having said that, I'm sure we'll see the Steelers and the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope you're right. You've been you've 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 had a good record of, of being correct in your predictions. In the past, I have <laughs> not yeah. not with right, the NFL right now. We're at 25 percent, right? <laughs> Coming up a little later in the show, we have Ryan Quinn. He is the author of a new novel. It's called The Fall. It's available on Amazon, or you can go to Compete Radio to learn how to buy the book. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Alfonso Chavez. He has uh, pop culture meets sports and sports pop. 
Stay with us. Log on to CompeteRadio.com. We'll be right back. Compete Radio. Welcome back to the show. I am your host, Josh Fourier. We have just experienced sports news and predictions with Buddy Early. Let's hope you're right, buddy. I'm crossing every finger I can. We are all holy. And, and mine are all black and, and gold. And his eyes, but too. His counting. My We're legs are crossed, which is unusual. But Hello? Oh. <laughs> We're also joined by Connie Wardman, our resident straight lady. Eric is, is out of the office today. He yes. will be back next week. Jay, of course, our engineer, making sure everything runs smoothly. And Alfonso Chavez with Sports Pop. Do I get a sound effect for that or what? Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, but but you you also get a reminder that it's Chavez, not Chavez. Did I say Chavez? I think you did. I, I did sounded not. like a. Sh- you'll get these. I did not. You'll Connie? get these Latino me. names shortly. Yeah. Did I, I really like, say Chavez? Yeah. <gasps> you know what it was? That it we're, was. The, we're redoing all the voiceover work, and mm-hmm. the guy that did it said Chavez, and I had to listen to that about a hundred times. Oh, that's true. So now it's embedded. I was getting it right. I was on like a good nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> I am so sorry, <laughs> Alfonso Chavez. Very specific. Um, so uh, we were just having a little bit of talk of Super Bowl with Buddy, and um, you know you're you're going to get a little bit more of the same right now because. Um, in addition to all the pageantry and opulence of the Super Bowl, um, we're going to add to it a little bit more. Um, the Super Bowl will have a red carpet. Uh, you know, if you just, uh, for those of you who just can't get enough of uh, award season, and and even for those of you not interest interested in it, uh, Fox is going to jam a few more yards of it down your throat. <laughs> that is at the Super Bowl. Freaking awesome. They have a red carpet for the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, so actually, are they going to put that in the back of everybody's trucks who are out there tailgating or what? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, <laughs> uh, Access Hollywood's uh, Maria Menounos and Michael Strahan of Fox will host the red carpet at one of the entrances to the NFL championship game. Now, what Good team did you. Michael Strahan play for? The New York Giants. The New York Giants. Okay, okay. I like him. Yeah, I lo- he's great. I like yeah. him a lot. Yeah, he has a great smile. You know. He does. Um, in 2008, uh, much to the dismay of Terry Bradshaw, uh, Brian Seacrest actually <laughs> hosted the first red carpet. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It, it just... Yeah. Um, Fox uh, president Eric Shanks believes uh, that Strahan is much more of a crossover star than any other pregame show personality, according to USA Today. So this is why Michael Strahan was chosen to host the red carpet. I think he's a good choice. Like Connie yeah. said, she likes him. You can tell, because he does the Fox Studio show on Sunday mornings, mm-hmm. yeah. he just has a great personality. That he, whole cast is fun. He had a show um, this past season that got canceled. I think it maybe was the season before last on I think it was Fox. It was called Brothers with Daryl mm-hmm. Chill Mitchell. Oh, yeah. It lasted about two months. It was so not funny, but I watched it just because I like watching You liked him. him. Hmm. Yeah, well, he just wow. seems so warm. Yeah. yeah. You know, he just has that about him. He's a very engaging personality, and he's got a good sense of humor. Yep. Yeah, and, and on a side note, uh, Strahan has been dealing with gay rumors yeah. since his wife filed for divorce, and she claimed he lived an, a quote-unquote alternative lifestyle, according to MercuryNews.com. That is so messed up. Yeah, <laughs> and and in 2007, two men won a date with Strahan in an auction, benefiting the <laughs> Institute for Civic Leadership. What is the question here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I really got to give him snaps for... Uh, for going on the date, you know, because it was benefiting um, a youth organization in New York. So he was a good sport yeah. about it. He he has been, he's handled the gay rumors very well, mm-hmm. whether he is or isn't gay. Um, he's dealt with it very well since his wife, basically, she came out and accused him of it. She said, yeah. this is why we're, it was kind of a nasty divorce they went through. And he's handled it very well. So is he, he officially says that he's not gay? He doesn't I don't respond think to he it. Officially said I, I anything. Think, okay. Yeah, I, I think they've done some publicity stunts uh-huh. mm-hmm. to show his heterosexuality. But you know, either way, I think he's one of those those athletes who could come out and people would be okay yeah. with it. He does support the gay men's health crisis in New York City a lot. He's a big okay. supporter of them, and he has gay friends. He makes no mistake about that. And I, I think he's dealt with it very well. Yeah. Well, moving Which on. To do. Moving on to uh, more disastrous news. Uh-oh. 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 At a mullet sports bar <laughs> and restaurant <laughs> in Homer Glen, Illinois. Perfect. Oh my gosh. No, was the I'm sorry. It's mullet like the haircut? Yes, mullets. 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 
sports okay. bar and restaurant. Multiple, <laughs> multiple bad haircuts. Yeah, well, um, a, a tragic. It was the location of a, a very tragic incident, in which a probably drunk man uh, became very angry upon seeing a framed photo of A.C. Slater above the urinal and uh, smashed it to the ground, what? breaking the frame. <laughs> oh now, if you've seen Saved by the Bell, you know that A.C. Slater was Mario Lopez's, Mario Lopez character. Uh -huh. and, and he kind of had the, arms. Arms, the late 80s um, Pacific Islander mullet. And the arms. You know, it was like the perm. With the arms. Yes, with the arms. Okay. <laughs> with the arms, yes. And Josh the singlet. Be an arm man, would he? Yeah, the arms. Yeah, don't forget about the singlet because yeah. you look pretty good in it. Um, what is that haircut called that he had? On it was show? a mullet. It was a mullet. He, it was a mullet. Really? Yeah. 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 Party in the front. Or like, what is like it? Business, business in the front, in the party front. in the back. Yeah. Is that like the first class mullet? Because it didn't look like the typical mullet. It was. Yeah, it was a. It was the Polynesian mullet. Oh, you know, because the Polynesians have typically have curly. curly I never liked hair. his hair on that show, but yeah. he was my favorite. Out but of, but out you of were Shane willing really? to overlook it, apparently. I, I was. He had <laughs> arms. Over. Um, moving on, <laughs> the berserk man was quoted as saying, "I just don't like Slater." And that was his reason. He was uh, more of a Zach Morris fan. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a I Mark he, Paul he's Gosselaar now a fan, fan of the myself. local Husco. <laughs> yeah, I, you got to watch this recent episode of Weeds that he was in. <gasps> yes. Anyway, um, the police. Were I remember called. that actually. The That's one of the few things I've seen, buddy. He's laughing. <laughs> yeah, the police were called, but the offender had already left. However, a person who wasn't this man who broke the frame gave an. Uh, um, an employee at Mullet's eleven dollars to pay for the obliterated picture frame. <sighs> what a tragedy! <laughs> that <laughs> wow, we, tragedy we, at Mullet's. Yes, holding a moment of silence or I, anything for them. <laughs> uh, well, isn't that redundant? A tragedy at Mullet's. <laughs> a mullet is a tragedy. Anyway, um, for those of you who have. Uh, followed the gay sports blogs or familiar with football blogs, you may remember um, a blogger named Boy from Troy. Now get ready to groan because he spelled boy, B-O-I. Oh, my yes. favorite. B-O-I, boy from Troy. He was a big supporter Troy. of uh, USC football, is that correct? Yes, yes. It was, well, basically, um, the well, according to LAobserve.com, he was a writer on politics, the gays, and USC football. And, you know, just throw in apple pie and you've got America right there. Um, <laughs> you left out the Chevy. Yeah, well, this this guy, boy from Troy, Scott Schmidt, um, he um, he's actually going to be running for a city council seat as a Republican in West Hollywood. That somehow <laughs> doesn't... Uh seem to fit, but well, okay. I don't know if there are a lot of Republicans in West Hollywood. Well, I, I, think I didn't know there were even a lot of Republicans anymore. Well, in <laughs> That's Josh's uh, left sorry, view. I, I, we sorry. digress. Um, <laughs> the article did say that in in the history of West Hollywood, there, were, there hasn't been anybody who was appointed or elected on their, on their city council or their assembly who was a Republican at the time they were appointed or elected. So there were people who were previously Republicans who were on their city assembly, but no longer. Yeah, I don't know the track record for uh, for West Hollywood, but I would imagine that would not be a very conservative Republican-ish district. Well, he says he feels as though he has a, a quote unquote record of accomplishment that people can believe in, uh, according to the Bay Area Reporter, referring to his position at West Hollywood's Transportation Commission. So he, I mean, he, he, he already has a position in the city, and, and he, he feels as though he has accomplished, you know, or, or he's, there's some level of uh, confidence that he has from the people in the city of West Hollywood that, that could elect him. Well, good for him if he's going to do good public service. West Hollywood Transportation Committee, does that mean he picks up drunk guys outside of the arena and <laughs> well, there them was, home and rolls them. There was one of the issues he talked about was that they were trying to allegedly. Bring, allegedly. Thank yeah, you. Allegedly. Stay off Santa Monica. Um, he, um, I guess they were trying to bring the the, the L.A. subway. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if the subway is the right word, yeah. but through West Hollywood, and um, 
the closest subway stop is two miles from, from any of the borders of West Hollywood. And he felt as though uh, the city leaders just didn't seem as invested in it as they should have been and, and that it, it very possibly could have been through West Hollywood. And that, it's, it's that kind of thing gotcha. that, that he's looking to, to do for the city. All I know is that every time I've been out to West Hollywood for the last 12, 15 years, it seems like there's been construction on Santa Monica Boulevard. They're never going to get that done. Go on, girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> it keeps on giving. Um, one thing that I did want to throw in before um, my time was up is uh, Huffington Post had an article asking who will be the cover girl regarding the Sports Illustrated 2011 swimsuit issue. And they also had a poll where people can vote on, on the models and, and decide which ones they thought would make it or, or which one would be the cover girl. And if you're looking for the answer to that question, I would like to remind you right now that you are listening to the wrong show. <laughs> so Either that or Google it's Google Dennis Google. Rodman without his ball gown. Now, what was the name of that town again where Mullets is located? Uh, that was in uh, Homer Glen, Illinois. Homer Glen. You're Homer already Glen. saddled with this town called Homer Glen. Why are you going to... Mullets. <laughs> Name your bar yeah. mullets. You know, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because I was just thinking to myself, oh a city called Homer, Homer Glen, and I'm guessing it's not the Greek uh, writer Homer who wrote the Odyssey Probably and the not. Iliad, but it, more like Homer Simpson. Don't. Yeah. Anyway. Was there an official response from A.C. Slater, Mario Lopez? You know, there, there, there wasn't, but there was a very uh, nice picture of him in a wrestling singlet flexing his muscles. I've been working on getting in touch with Mario Lopez, so I'll get the two. I, there's a restraining order, but I'm still oh. working on it. <laughs> Coming up next, we have Ryan Quinn. He's the author of The Fall. Log on to CompeteRadio.com for news, information, hot topics, and more. Stay with us. We have an amazing interview Coming up right after the break. We'll be right back. Compete Radio. Compete Radio. Welcome back to the show. I am your host, Josh Fourier. With us today is Ryan Quinn, who is making his debut with the release of his very first novel, The Fall. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, we're glad that you're here as well. Now, even though this is Ryan's first novel, Ryan has been involved in publishing and in media for quite some time. How long specifically, Ryan, have you been in publishing? Um, about five, a little over five years. Um, I moved to New York after after college and... Uh, wanted to work in publishing, and, and that's pretty much where it all is. Yeah, I, I did a little bit of research. I was I was stalking you online, and I saw that you established your career actually working for Penguin Books and St. Martin's Press. Um, now, I know that a lot of our listeners probably have also seen your work on Outsports.com, and you've become a regular contributor on that site as well, right? That's right, yeah. Now, something else that I think is pretty remarkable about you, Ryan, is that you are also uh, one of the first openly gay team members on the Division One ski team at the University of Utah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're we're thrilled that you could be here today. I'd like to actually jump right into your book. Um, now, I read it cover to cover in about a day. I literally could not put it down, and I have to say, I do not read. So. <laughs> Being that that is the case, I really actually I really enjoyed your book. Um, Thank you. That's uh, that's awfully kind of you to say. Well, I I personally like the way you brought us into the lives of the three main characters. It really it kind of put everything into perspective. Now, just to get all of our listeners up to speed, can you tell us just briefly what your book is about? Yeah, sure. Um, it's it's uh, set at a, a college. Um, and follows the, the narratives of three uh, seniors, as in a girl, um, and we sort of uh, follow them as their narratives become more and more intertwined uh, over the course of, of, uh, of the semester. And uh, one of them's on the, uh, on the football team, uh, sort of star receiver. Um, another one is uh, a tennis player who's sort of struggling with his um, sexuality, uh, and then uh, a girl who's sort of leaving her 
her very structured upbringing as a, a violin prodigy to to make it as a singer songwriter to come to the school uh, for its um, sort of tailored music program, and uh, they all wind up in a sort of triangle, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely a, a really unique dynamic and contrast between the three characters. My question is, though, Ryan, what I mean, you obviously already have a really busy schedule in life. What was it that made you stop to write this story? Uh, well, you know, you, I didn't stop everything else. I mean, you, you can't really. I guess um, mm -hmm. it was more that it was more that I, you know, I just felt I had to. Uh, Write this. You know, the, the, excuse me. The story was there in in my head, and um, or you know, actually not the, the full story, but you know, pieces of it. The characters, more more the theme, I guess, of this time in life when you're sort of at the end of of young, you know, the end of your childhood, and you have to figure out what what comes next. But it's that it was just a, something that kept interesting interested me, and. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't turn away from it, so, uh, you know, I made it into this story, and, um, <clears throat> it, uh, it took about four years. Uh, I mean, the first, the first draft I kind of knocked out in, in eight months or so, um, and, and it was way too long. <laughs> uh, I, I had to, uh, to hack a bunch out, which is hard. I mean, editing is the hardest, the hardest part of writing. Absolutely. Um, because, because you, you fall in love with every sentence you write, uh, when you when you put it on the page the first time, and you have to get to a point where uh, the story, the finished product, becomes more important um, than you know the feeling of writing each sentence at the time because yeah you, know, you don't want to drag readers through through a hundred pages more than they need. Oh sure, well you know as a as an artist in some ways personally myself I know that and, and Connie I'm sure you can relate to this I know a lot of the work that I've produced in my past um, no matter what it is I know that a lot of my uh, my personal life or a, a part of me comes through in my work um, now I'm wondering how much of you I, I, I would imagine it would be the same on some level between art, artists and authors how much of you came through um, on a personal level in this book? Um, well, I guess in, in an abstract sense, um, it's all me. <laughs> uh, you know, we are, as a writer, any other kind of artist, I guess, you, you don't really have any other experiences than your own to draw from. Uh, so it's all there. It's, uh, I guess the creative part is how you mix you mix and match like the the parts that are interesting, the parts that you actually live versus the parts that you sort of dreamed about or, or, or seen other people go through. And um, you know, eventually you know, for example, there's nothing nothing in this book that actually happened to me. It's not autobiographical in that sense. Um, but pieces of every character and, you know, this this concept of Struggling with your your sexual orientation in college while also being an athlete, you know, obviously I experienced those things, but not in the specific way that the characters do. So it's finding you find a balance, I guess, between the the honesty of the the sort of emotions and situations, and then the 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 fiction is the interesting story part that sort of wraps it up and delivers it. Yeah, that is that is absolutely true. Um, I know what I took away from the book. What do you when when you were writing this and you were going back and you were, you know, thinking about all the editing that you had to do, um, as difficult as that was, I'm sure that you had a clear mission of what you wanted your readers. Um, I'm sure not all the same across the board, but. Um, a, a, a certain aspect or, or, or something to take away from the book. Um, what is it that you are expecting your readers to walk away with after they read your novel? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, I want it to be enjoyed uh, as a story. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I, it's, a, it's a 
a ton of books that has a, a message, like you read the book to get this out of it. Um, I think writers of fiction run into a lot of trouble when they try to do that, um, you know, because it can become preachy in a way. So yeah. I think um, I approached it from the, you know, I, I wanted it to just be as honest as possible because part of, you know, the reason it was interesting to me is because I was frustrated, at, you know, when I was in college or high school that there were no examples of, of stories like this, um, you know, either on TV or in books. And so, you know, I wanted I wanted a story out there where, I, you know, I know kids or, or young adults who, who maybe are struggling with some of these issues, and, and I'm not just talking about, you know, the gay character, because there's three characters, only one of them is gay. Um, and so I wanted that sort of honest thing that I think everybody goes through, but that we don't really talk about very much. I wanted that to sort of have an outlet for readers. Um, and then from there, you know, I don't, you know, you take from it uh, what you what you do, I guess. But um, I think if if there's something readers do take from it, it's um, that we all are a little. I, I, I don't know. It's um, what we think about on the inside. I guess is sometimes different from from how we act on the outside. Uh, I think you see the interplay of that between the three characters. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know what what, what did you what did you get from it? I'm actually curious. Uh, actually, what really what you just said that 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 the way that we function in life and the way that we feel on the inside is not at all at times how we project ourselves to the outside world. But um, now now speaking of that. I, I did want to touch on, we only have about two minutes left, but I wanted to ask you just briefly. Um, first and foremost, you are an athlete, um, and I, I think it's pretty remarkable that you were, in fact, one of the first openly gay athletes to your, to your, your teammates on your ski team. I'm curious how you were treated by your, your team, teammates after you, you came out. Um, really, really well. I mean, uh, beyond just tolerated... Uh, uh, I was, you know, completely accepted. Um, I think the team, the overarching feeling was was one of respect, and you know, <clears throat> they appreciated that. You know, I didn't have to have a secret. You know, it was, it was sort of a mutual. They were honored that I would tell them something. So I'm, I'm sure it was important. a big weight off your shoulders as well to be able. Yeah, to yeah. And, and, you know, at, at first it was very isolating right before I came out, but then I started to realize, you know, then they were great, and I was like, oh, wow, I'm so lucky. And then, you know, you start looking around, and, and more and more of college athletes started coming out. And uh, it's, it wasn't very uh, remarkable, my situation. I mean, most most people have incredibly positive experiences. Um, and, you, you know, I think people need to know that, and... And come out sooner because most most people wish they do. They did. Well, absolutely. And Ryan, I I would just like to. I mean, we're out of time. I wish we had more time. I would like to thank you so much for stopping by and telling us all about your book. Log on to competeradio.com where you can buy Ryan's new book, The Fall. It's available on Amazon as well. Compete Radio highly recommends it. And Ryan, we thank you so much again for taking the time to chat with us today. Best of luck. Sure, absolutely. You. And best of luck to you. We look forward to hearing from you soon. You're welcome back here anytime. All right. Thanks. Log on to CompeteRadio.com for news, information, hot topics, and more. It's gay sports around the world when we come back. Compete Radio. Compete Radio. Welcome back to the show. I am your host, Josh Fourier. If you just joined us, we had a uh, thrilling interview with Ryan Quinn. He is the author of The Fall. It's a brand new novel uh, that he has released. You can pick it up uh, by going to CompeteRadio.com, where we will route you over to the appropriate retail outlet where you can purchase the book for yourself. 
buddy. Josh, I'd also like to let people know that um, Ryan is going to be featured in our March issue of Compete magazine. Yes, he is. Um, our, in fact, our Athlete of the Year for 2010, Michael Holtz, um, has um, recently become friendly with Ryan, and, and Michael's going to interview Ryan for a new segment, uh, for a new feature in uh, I love the Compete title. called, um, well, it's probably not what you think, oh. but Michael has a new <laughs> upcoming upcoming uh, feature in the magazine. Anyway, his first interview is going to be with Ryan Quinn, and I would like to say, I don't know why Ryan does not have a photo of himself anywhere in the book, like on the jacket, inside, or something, because he's a very, very good-looking guy. As Rosie O'Donnell would say, he's a cutie patootie. He's a cutie patootie. <laughs> well, you know, and Michael Holtz, our Athlete of the Year, he's really living up to his title, isn't he? I mean, he what, a, what a good guy. He's, he's a wonderful supporter out there for all gay athletes. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's very much taking his reign as Miss Compete. I mean, our athlete of the year. He's so. going above and beyond, yeah, and that's really, that's great. Um, Speaking of Miss Compete, um, <laughs> gay sports around the world. I think we're just going to focus on our country. For yeah, now, right? yeah. What I have right now is mostly in the United States. Um, the uh, uh, last weekend began Aspen Gay Spe Ski Weekend, excuse me, and it goes through the 23rd. So it actually uh, finishes up this weekend in Aspen, Colorado. If you're looking for information on that, go to GaySkiWeek.com. Uh, this weekend um, is Blowing Rock 2011 Summit Gay Ski Weekend, which we are actually sponsoring, and that is taking Yay. place in uh, Blowing Rock, North Carolina, and if you're there, you'll actually probably meet Ken Hunt, who will be judging a swimsuit contest while he's there, and Ken Hunt writes a fitness article. And if you're if you're looking for information on that, uh, look up uh, a Google Blowing Rock 2011 Summit Gay Ski Weekend. And and the column he writes is for Compete Magazine. To, uh, CompeteRadio.com for more information on that. Uh, January 27th through 30th. Now, this is actually going to be next weekend, but we want to give you a little bit of a jump on what's going on. This is actually outside of our arena, but sometimes there are um, movies that pertain to us. This is actually the Bloomington Pride LGBTQ Film Festival in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, go to pridefilmfestival.org for more information or go to competeradio.com. Uh, and there's also the Duel in the Desert in Palm Springs, California, next weekend, January 28th through 29th, and that is a flag football tournament. Again, compete. Just the name sounds sexy. <laughs> Duel in the Desert. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of these tournament names, so over time, you become a little bit numb to them. Oh, so some just, of them are really far out. Yeah, this one isn't as sassy as, as uh, some of the other ones <laughs> I've come across. No, there's always some great, the, the, the bowling tournaments always have great oh, names yeah, and like acronyms like Twitch or Snatch. Or, or last year, there was one called Flirt. <laughs> yeah. Flirt, yeah. But, yeah, those bowling tournaments, they, they do get very creative, and there are a lot of them. Yes. Uh, speaking of bowling, uh, next weekend on the 29th, Huntsville Invitational Bowling Tournament. Hick. <laughs> oh, that's that's what it's all. called, Hick. With yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With an H, not a D, right? Hick. <clears throat> yeah, the Hick. Hick. It's called the Hick. <laughs> that's actually, yeah. Um, and that's taking place in Huntsville, Alabama. So if you're down in the deep south. And Amazing. Bowling. Like every weekend there's bowling going on. Uh -huh. Knock some Game bowling. with your bowling balls. There you go. One, one of offensive. the my favorites is coming up, I think, later in uh, February. But we're known in Phoenix as the Valley of the Sun. And it's a volleyball tournament. And they're calling it Volley del Sol, mm -hmm. which is Valley of the Sun. And yeah, I think there's an apartment complex with that name as well. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I... Bali? B O L L E Y? Del Sol. Yeah, okay. It, it, it may be Voya. Or anyway, but um, <laughs> the uh, all of these events will be on CompeteRadio.com, so if you want to double-check the dates or get linked over to those tournaments and find out some more information, uh, that's where you can go. Absolutely. Yay. Well, I wish I could go to each and every one of them, so being that I can't, I will go <laughs> to now. <laughs> so you can meet the men... I meet all the men's. Is A.C. Slater going to be at any of them? Uh, not that I know of, but there, there's probably going to be plenty of bullets. You know, that is, I tell you what, <laughs> the Saved by the Bell, have you ever done that, buddy? Like, if you think back to your childhood, I remember growing up, 
There was Full House, Saved by the Bell. Our, our, our growing up was different from yours. <laughs> well, well, yeah, <laughs> okay. Older. But, yeah. but like, I remember yes, before I remember school, there was always rock. we would watch Full House, Saved by the Bell was on TBS in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember those shows and how into them that I was and how cool they were. And then, have you ever just gone back recently? And seen anything like Full House or, or one of those shows that you watched? They're like, like so you're obnoxious. Like, you're like, how oh my cheesy. God, how did I sit through we watching were, this crap? We were a big um, Saved by the Bell household. Yeah. I was in college at the time. Uh-huh. And so we were high when we watched it. <laughs> uh, we loved it. And now looking back, because sometimes I'll catch it when I'm flipping through the channels. Yeah. And it's just ultimate cheese. Not Isn't funny. It? Not funny in the least. It, Sorry, guys. It, no, it, it really. I mean, and I, I keep going back to Full House because that was primarily what was on. It seemed like Nick at Night, or not Nick at Night. It was one of those. They had a marathon of it constantly. The only show I can go back and watch and be like, that show is still freaking awesome is Roseanne. Oh, yeah. I yeah, love I, Roseanne. You know, I love Roseanne. And I, I hated Roseanne. <gasps> I still... I when my mom would get along. Oh, yeah. she, well, but she was just crude for the sake of being crude. Well, you know what? Actually, it wasn't too far from what it was like in our house. <laughs> and and on, you know what I mean? It seemed like it was crude, but some I, a lot of people lived that show. I will say without the I really part. loved say the first four or five seasons of Roseanne, mm-hmm. and then it got to the point where it was it was mean it was mean. Yeah. Where it was a little over the top, and she was just insulting the first several seasons were just hey this is your typical middle america family struggling to make ends meet and raise their family and i really liked that well you know what there were a lot of women i knew that were mean-spirited like that and and could be really harsh about other women and other people and so i i really saw the show as really honest and her character is really honest because i knew i knew that woman in a bunch of different people. Yeah, we all know honesty isn't very pretty sometimes. Well, and one other thing I was going to say was one of the shows that I still watch that was pretty funny is uh, 227. I still love seeing 227. I have a, I, What's 227? It was it was a spinoff, I think, of the Jeffersons. No, it, was it wasn't spin-off. a spinoff. It was just, it was just a, Marla Gibbs was the yeah. star. And, oh, okay. and Jack A. Harris was in it. And oh, Regina funny. King and uh, Countess Vaughn were in it. <laughs> Countess Vaughn. It, it was Count- funny. I can't believe we haven't mentioned the Golden Girls. Well, oh, I, I think we've we need to do from a, sports. An entire <laughs> show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, back to coach, sports, though. Coach, no, really. coach is still funny. <laughs> Co- yeah. But one of the movies I remember, which was one of my favorites, and I don't know why, because I was never a big sports person, but The Mighty Ducks, when, when that came out, I think it was probably my age, but The Mighty Ducks, I remember that, and it was one of my favorite movies. And... Rookie of the Year was also one of did, my favorites. Did you see The Sandlot? Yes. The Sandlot was so funny, and I don't know. I, I mean, I have, like, 13 nieces and nephews, and there were, like, two nieces who were the oldest, and in between it was, like, nothing but boys. So you, there were, like, these three to, to eight-year-old boys that were, like, running around, and every time they were at my mom's house, they were watching The Sandlot. And I, I don't know how many times I heard, I heard them walking around saying "forever, forever." <laughs> forever. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a line for, from the Sandlot. Do you think if we went back and watched those movies now, that we would still be as into them as we were? I think the Sandlot would still be funny. What about I, the Bad News Bears? Yeah, that was kind of like one of the. Fu- Maybe we could get Chico's Bail Bonds to sponsor <laughs> us, and we could have cool shirts like that. Bad News Bears is a classic for sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't know any Chico who owns a bail bond <laughs> store. But but, it, but if I did, I probably would have called him when I needed him. It is it is Phoenix. I'm sure there's a Chico bail bond somewhere. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for listening to the show, and uh, definitely log on to CompeteRadio.com to buy Ryan's book. It is called The Fall. It's a very, very good story about three characters with very diverse and interesting dynamics that uh, he he basically puts us into their lives and takes us through a journey. Um, I would like to also mention that Ryan... um, is an openly gay athlete and and Three he cheers for him absolutely i mean that that is incredible to to see that you are being true to yourself you're not hiding and what i love even more about the story in this situation is hey everything turned out okay you can be bright you can be an amazing athlete and you can 
be a perfect person. Yeah. Yeah, when, um, while we're on that, I just wanted to throw in that I'm so glad that he touched upon the awkwardness of going to homecoming when you're gay, how how awkward that is for everybody. And whether you're in high school or college, that's something that all of us experience. Well, it happens with straight people, too, don't forget. that That's just well, but not an no, I think what Alfonso is referring to dates. is going to a homecoming dance or the like, um, knowing that you're gay and going with a girl and... You know, or having to figure all that out, <laughs> just uh, yeah, going well, through the motions there. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to run out and buy coming. everybody a big Josh mom is just, that oh, they can wear so they feel better today. Josh was just sitting there with a smile on his face, like he was it thinking was, back. It, it was the good times back in the '90s. Good times, God, great the '90s. Rock. Okay, log on to competeradio.com for news, information, hot topics, and more. Thank you so much for listening, and believe me, we will see you next week. Don't forget, all of the events listed on today's show are also on CompeteRadio.com. I'm Josh Fourier. With the cast and crew, thank you for listening. Compete Radio.